Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 3.5. It's going to be in two parts. Uh, in this first part, we're going to look at decimals and fractions. And in the second part, we'll apply order of operations to decimals and explore scientific notation. So when we're looking at decimals and fractions, we know that fractions represent parts of a whole. And decimals do the same thing. So at times, if we're going to do math operations on them, we have to convert from decimals to fractions or fractions to decimals. So we're going to look at how to do that. So this first example, I have 11.25. And if we are familiar with our place values, we can write this as a fraction. The way we do that is the value that is the whole value, 11 in this case, I would just write as 11. Now I look at what is the decimal value. It's 0.25. Well, that would be 25 one hundredths. So I write it as 25 one hundredths. I've converted this to a fraction number. And we can see it's a mixed number, 11 and 25 one hundredths. But with any fraction, we want to reduce this value. So if we look at this value, 25 over 100, they both contain a factor of 25, because 100 is divisible by 25. So I can reduce that. 25 goes into 25 once, and 25 goes into 100 four times. So 11.25 is the same thing as 11 and 1 fourth, or 11 and a quarter. All right, what if we have a fraction and we want to convert it to a decimal? Well, we can do that simply by doing the division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my divisor and my dividend and do this division. Well, 8 doesn't go into 5, so I have to introduce a decimal and add a 0. So 8 goes into 5 0 times, but 8 goes into 50 6 times, which would be 40, 48, excuse me. If I find that difference, I get 2. Well, I need another 0 if I'm going to continue this division. 8 goes into 20 twice, which would be 16. I find that difference to be 4. I need another 0. I bring it down. 8 goes into 40 5 times, which is 40. And now I have no remainder. So I don't have to bring any values down because 8 goes into 0, 0 times. So we find that 5 eighths is equivalent to 625 one thousandths, or 0.625. All right, sometimes we'll come across fractions like this. Now, a fraction is an integer over an integer. But when we convert it to a decimal, sometimes it's a non-terminating decimal. And it's something that we call a repeating decimal if the same value is repeated over and over if we continue out the division. So to convert this to a decimal, we do the exact same thing we did with this fraction. We do that division. I have 3 as my divisor, and 1 is my dividend. So how many times does 3 go into 1? 0 times. Well, I have to introduce a decimal and add a digit here. 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 would be 9. If I find that difference, I would get 1. 10 minus 9 is 1. Well, add another 0, bring down the, the digit, which is 0 in this case. And we see we have 10 again, just like we had here. Well, if I do that division, it's going to be 3, which would give me 9. And I find that difference to be 1. If I bring down another 0, I get 10 again. Well, hopefully at this point, we can see that this division is going to repeat. So this is a non-terminating, repeating decimal. And when we have those, we could continue to write it out forever, or we can just put a bar over that. This indicates that this decimal would repeat. So I can round it to whatever value I would want, whether it's the tens or the hundredths or the thousands or so on. But I put that value over to show that this would just continue to repeat. It's a non-terminating repeating decimal. Now, here I have three examples and I want of each kind of example we just did. I want you to try these on your own. 0 0.06, which is the same thing as 6 one hundredths. Write that out as a fraction and then reduce. Here we have 6 fifths. Do this division. 
and see what decimal number you get. Here I have 1 sixth. Do this division and see what decimal you get. And it should be a repeating value. So where are you going to round that off to? Or are you just going to write it as a repeating value? All right, let's look at where we might apply having to convert decimals to fractions or vice versa. When we have to do a mathematical operation on a series of numbers, and maybe some of those numbers contain fractions and some contain decimals, in order to do the math, we want this to be all the same. We want it to be all decimals or all fractions. So we have to do that conversion. So 10 and 1 half, I'm going to write these to have all fractions. So 10 and 1 half is going to be 10 point something. Well, what is that something? Well, many of us know that 1 half is 0.5. We know that. But if we did that division, let's show that division right here. 2 doesn't go into 1, so I introduce that decimal. 2 goes into 1 0 times. Add the decimal and bring a 0. 2 goes into 10 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10. I find that difference to be 0. OK, we've gotten to 0. There's no remainder, 0.5. So it's 10.5. We've converted that to a decimal. 7.64 is already a decimal, so we're there. What about 3 and 4 fifths? Well, this is going to be 3 point whatever that 4 fifths decimal is. Let's do that division. We have 4 being divided by 5. Dividend, or excuse me, dividend divisor. What I'm dividing by goes on the outside. So 5 doesn't go into 4, so I introduce my decimal. And I bring a digit. 5 goes into 40 eight times. 8 times 5 is 40. I do that subtraction, no remainder. So 0.8. So it would be 3.8. We take the whole, and then we convert the fraction to a decimal. All right, so now that they're all decimals, I could add this up. To add decimals, if we recall, we just line up all of our decimal values. And then to add them, maybe we put in some placeholders. But we line up our decimals. 0, 4, and 0 is 4. 8 and 6 is 14. And 5 is 19. Carry the 1. 7 and 3 is 10. Plus that 1 is 11. Carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 2. Now that decimal, since we lined it up, this value is 21.94. Now, what if we decided to use fractions instead? Honestly, I prefer to use fractions. Well, the 10 and 1 half is already a fraction. 7.64, we can write 7. And that 6.4, I'm going to write as a fraction. So it's 64 one hundredths. 0.64 is 64 one hundredths. And now I can reduce this value. 64 and 100 are both divisible by 4. 4 goes into this 16 times. 4 goes into that 25. So I have 16 25ths. 16 25ths. Now to add the last value, it's already a fraction, 3 and 4 fifths. Now to add these, I just have to find a common denominator. So I'll do that. <clears throat> the common denominator of 2, 25, and 5. Well, this has two factors of 5. This has a factor of 2. So 2 factors of 5 is 25. Factor of 2 is 2. 2 times 25 is 50. My LCD is 50. So this would be 10 and 25 fiftieths, a ratio of 1 half, plus 7 and 32 fiftieths. And this would be 3 and 40 or Oh, yeah, that's right. No. Oh, I have, OK. I have to multiply by 10. Yeah, 40 fiftieths. Don't doubt yourself. Sometimes you're on the right track. All right, and now to add this, I can add the whole numbers together. 10 and 7 is 17, and 3 is 20. I can add my fractions together, because they have the common denominator. 25 and 32 is 57. 57 and 40 is 97. And now, if I were oh, over 50, 
Now, if I look at this, I could do this division. And if I do that division, I could write it back as a fraction. But I notice that this is an uh, improper fraction. I want to have a proper fraction. So I'm just going to say 50 goes into 97 one time. So I can pull one out and add it to this whole number, because that one I pull out is the whole part. And then subtract 50 from this, and that'll give me 47 fiftieths. So 21 and 47 fiftieths should be the same as that. Well, this is 94 one hundredths. Let's just look at this for a moment, 47 fiftieths. Well, if I double this, I'll have the same denominator as one hundredths, right? This is 94 over 100. So I want to make this over 100. I just double both of these. 50 times 2 is 100. Well, 47 times 2, guess what it is? 94. So this is 94 one hundredths. They are equivalent. One's written as a decimal. One's written as a fraction. So we can do it both ways, and we still get equivalent values. 21 and 94 one hundredths is the same as 21 and 47 fiftieths. All right, when it comes to converting fractions to decimals, sometimes we have to do a little bit of an assessment. Here's an example. We worked with the fraction 1 half and 0.64. We want to insert whether the fractions or the decimals are less than, greater than, or equal to. So if we look at this, 1 half, we have to have the same value. I can write this as a decimal. And we know that this is 0.5. We've already worked that. 0.5 is, of course, less than 0.6. If I had 50 cents or if I had 64 cents, 64 cents would be greater. So 1 half is less than 0.64. 4 fifths, we already converted that to a decimal. We found it to be 0.8. And if we look at that, 0.8 is greater than 0.64. So 4 fifths is more than or greater than 64 one hundredths. 16 20 fifths. What, if, what is this value? Well, if I want to convert this to a decimal, I could multiply, or I, excuse, I could do the division, or I could multiply this to get it to be some factor of 10, because decimals are just denoting factors of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself, what can I multiply by 25 to make it a factor of 10? Well, if I multiply this by 4, I know 25 times 4 is 100. 100 is a factor of 10. What I do to the bottom, I can do to the top. 16 times 4 is 64. 25 times 4 is 100, 64 one hundredths. To convert this to a decimal is really easy. Remember when we divide by 100, we just move the decimal to the left. Well, if I move the decimal to the left, 1, 2, I get 0.64. These two, 16 25 and 0.64, are equivalent. So why don't you try this one right here uh, on your own. Determine if this is greater than, less than, or equal to this value right here. Make sure you, if you do division to carry this out, carry it out to the appropriate amount of digits, and possibly round if you have to, just to figure out if this is greater than, less than, or equal to this value right here. So this has been section 3.5, decimals and fractions. And in the next video, we'll look at order of operations and scientific notation. Thank you.